So now those stresses are in Cartesian coordinates, right? E even after we've, the, the stress tensor is in Cartesian coordinates because, you know, x, y, and z, right? Once we're down in the wellbore, then it makes sense to go back in the polar coordinates to evaluate the stress of the wellbore wall. And this is the transformation from, you know, from the Cartesian coordinates uh, back into the polar coordinates that we had before. Right. And, you know, so delta P again, uh, well, just, just to be clear, the, the stresses, sigma, this is the, uh, the sigmas are effective stresses, right? And then delta P is the mud weight minus the pore pressure, and nu is Poisson's ratio. So then, once we have the stresses in polar coordinates, we can evaluate the principal stresses. So remember, in a vertical well, I said your principal stresses are always going to be sigma theta theta, sigma rr, sigma zz. Right? In, a, in an arbitrarily deviated well, that's not going to be the case. Sigma rr will always be a principal stress. But then the other two principal stresses are the maximum and minimum tangential stresses, right? So these are the, the maximum and man, minimum tangential stresses on the wellbore wall. And you can evaluate those via these equations. So, you know, again, the procedure, ultimately we're trying to dis discover or evaluate whether we're going to have breakouts or tensile fractures. And the, the procedure then is take the principal stresses, rotate them into the geographic plane. Rotate them into the wellbore. Take the Cartesian stress tensor, convert it into polar coordinates. And then from those po polar coordinates, evaluate the minimum and maximum tangential stresses along with sigma RR. That's going to be your three principal stresses. You know your three principal stresses. You can order them, draw more circles, compare with a more Coulomb failure surface and determine if the wellbore will fail or not. Okay.